Welcome back. The clock is ticking for federal student loan borrowers. After more than two years of paused payments, they're set to pick back up at the end of the month. The White House says President Biden is still weighing the possibility of canceling student loan debt. But he's struggling to find a solution that members of his party can agree on. Some lawmakers want to forgive up to $50,000, but others don't like the idea of forgiving the same amount for everyone. And some Republicans are completely against debt forgiveness altogether. And a new book is presenting a case that a college education has gone from creating opportunities to fracturing the country and the culture. After the ivory tower falls, how college broke the American dream and blew up our politics and how to fix it is out this week. And now we're joined by the book's author, Will Bunch, who is also a national columnist for the Philadelphia Inquirer. Welcome to the show and good morning to you, sir. Uh, so student debt is a huge issue for both lawmakers and the millions of borrowers uh, who are going to head to the polls in November. A lot of people paying close attention to this extension potentially. Uh, so can you explain the influence that our higher education system has on our government um, as a whole right now? Well, right. Well, the student debt's become the focal point, and that's partly because of this deadline. You know, right. um, payments are supposed to resume uh, in September. Uh, President Biden promised as a candidate in 2020 that he would forgive at least ten thousand dollars per borrower uh, of, of debt, and it's been it's been about 19 months now, and people are wondering when the promise is is going to be realized. So, so it's it's really crunch time, and I, you know I can't stress what a moral and and also a political issue this is, especially for people under the age of 35 or 40 who are the main holders of these debts. Although more and more, there's even older people who you know have fifty, seventy-five thousand dollars in debt. Uh, some people have six-figure debt. And this is really the result of decisions that were made over 60 or 70 years that we weren't going to make college education a public good the way that K-12 through education is in America, that, that, that we were going to privatize it, that the responsibility was going to be on the individual, the finances education, and as tuition kept rising, the, the only way for most of the middle class to do that is by borrowing the money and hope that they earn enough in their lifetime to easily pay it back and many many are not easily paying it back many people are struggling with this yeah so in your book you suggest that some people just simply underscore the magnitude of college's impact on politics uh of course we know all the top headlines these days all the topics lawmakers are arguing over including national security immigration health care and many more but would you argue that student debt may be just as important as those other topics when it comes to politics I, you know, I would say student debt, but I would I would also say higher education in general. You know, higher education has just become the fault line in, in American politics. Uh, you know, if you look at if you look at the uh, polling that's done every election cycle, more and more the Democrats are the party of uh, people with college degrees, and and the Republicans more and more are the party of the working class, especially the white working class, without college degrees, and. Um, I think one of the reasons this has happened is, again, you know, making our education system into this kind of meritocracy where uh, people are told people are told that their self worth is a factor of whether they were able to, you know, have the gumption to work their way through this system, even as it even as it's become so expensive. You know, the people who've been locked out of this system because they can't afford college or they don't think that they don't have the right aptitude to, to sit in a classroom for four years. Um, they, they feel they're being looked down on. You know, they, they feel that they're being told they have less worth in a society than people who have college degrees, even, even though they don't think that's fair. And that, that's a big source of resentment. You know, Donald Trump in particular capitalized on this in 2016, said famously that I, that I loved the poorly educated because, because he did well with, uh, with voters who, who shared these resentments. So in your opinion, then, what is the solution here? Because, I mean, I, I think if you ask different people in different realms, you know, whether it's in politics or higher education, they all kind of come to the table with different solutions. But in your opinion, uh, what what do you think is going to solve this problem? It's not going to go away. We can push back, you know, the and, and, and defer loan payments as, as long as we want. Right. At the end of the day, they're still going to be there and people are still going to take decades and decades to finally pay them off. You're absolutely right. If, you know, if we, if we just do loan forgiveness and, and don't make any other policy changes, then the freshmen who are starting college this month are just going to be starting a whole new debt bomb, you know, from, from building. So, um, uh, you know, I, I argue, first of all, the biggest thing, again, is, is the attitude. How, 
how can we make college a public good? You know, uh, you know, America is the richest country in the world. You know, how do we reallocate our resources so that uh, people can start going to community college for free? Uh, um, we, we need to expand free trade schools because there's a real demand for people who, you know, don't have traditional bachelor's degrees, but, you know, can become contractors or landscapers or carpenters. Um, uh, so, so we need to we need to reform the system around those lines in terms of making education a, pr a priority. Because look at the look at the impact impacts of not having education. You know, America leads the world in denial of climate change. Uh, um, you know, our politics is rife with conspiracy theories right now, whether it's QAnon or whether people believing the big lie that, that caused the January 6th insurrection. And we need to figure out how to make educating our young people and getting them on the right track a priority, because I think that really overshadows or overlaps in some cases all these other problems. All right, Will Bunch, Will Bunch author of After the Ivory Tower Falls, uh, thank you so much for joining us on this uh, very important topic to many voters. We will be right back. Thanks for having me.